I am joined by Mr. Josh Kaplan, who's a PM on the Power BI team. How are you, Josh? Good, how are you doing? All right. Guys, we've got something awesome for you. We are going to talk about premium resources and how you can actually investigate what's going on. Stay tuned. We are at Ignite, Josh. We are very lucky to be in the diversity and tech booth area at the Ignite floor, and it's a pretty awesome space. Yeah. And so we wanted to take a few minutes and just talk about the new premium capacity metrics stuff and what people can do if they're struggling with premium, if you're finding some issues. And so this is specific to if you have premium capacity. So this doesn't apply if you're just in pro or non-premium uh, shared capacity area, right? That's correct. All right. And so so, so what do we got, Josh? Set, set us up here. What so are we looking at? Right here we're looking at the capacity admin portal for one of my capacities. Um, and you might be familiar with the metrics that we currently have available now. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it's very, very <laughs> concise. Um, and it's, we added some stuff where you can do some drill downs. Let's click on memory here and let's look at our memory usage over time. So this shows us the last uh, seven days of our memory usage for this particular capacity. And the average memory usage. That looks awesome. Is it? Yeah, it's totally, what is that? Is that good? Is I don't know what, I don't know how to, I don't know how to tell if that's, bad or good or? And from this, you really can't. Okay. Um, Power BI uses a lot of memory and it does that purposefully. Gives, that's what gives you some of that great performance. So using a lot of memory, not necessarily bad. Okay. Um, to know if your capacity is getting loaded, you need a, a bit more detail. And that has been possible up until now with the, with the metrics that are available. Um, but we have these new metrics available now, which you can install as a Power BI app. It's called the uh, Premium Capacity Monitoring. Okay. You can find it by uh, being on your capacity page and clicking on the check it out here. Awesome, and that'll just go install the app for me? I'll go and install the app, I have awesome. to log in, and then it will go and start pulling your data. Are there any requirements to be able to install this app? You have to be a capacity admin and okay. have privileges on that capacity. So being an admin, a Power BI admin or a global admin is not enough. We have to be listed as a capacity admin. As a Power BI, being a Power BI admin is enough now. Okay, um, awesome. And uh, there's the one exception when it comes to Power BI Embedded. There's right. additional uh, permissions you have to grant to Power BI on Power BI Embedded. Please check out the docs for, for those right. steps. Yep, it's documented out. Great. Excellent. So this does work for both embedded capacities and premium capacities. That's correct. Excellent. OK, we're looking at the so new app. So we just open up the dashboard in the new app. Um, this gives you some summary information, you know, how many capacities are you an admin of, how many data sets are on there, how many workspaces are on there, you know, kind of the average memory. Similar stuff what you saw before, but a little bit more detail. Um, when you actually click on one of these tiles, it'll open up the, the more, much more detailed report. This report's showing right now all the capacities I have access to, the different workspaces in there, uh, the different data sets. I can actually filter this down to a specific capacity, which happens to be one of my P2 capacities. And I can click on the data sets tab here. And this actually gives me a summary of what's going on in that capacity. Similar to what we saw on the dashboard, but this now is filtered. Every page now is filtered to what I just selected. So awesome. one capacity. That here. makes sense. Um, but we can get more details. So we were talking about the memory. Is, is it good or is it not good? Well, to, um, when we query something in Power BI or do anything with a data set in Power BI, we load that data set, all that data, into memory fully. And that's how we get some of that great performance. Um, and we allow you on a premium capacity to have way more data sets than you have memory to handle. So how's that work? Well, we use a lot of memory to start with. Um, but as things become inactive, we'll actually go ahead and kick those data sets out. We call that eviction. Yep. So when um, we try to load it, if, if your memory is full and we need to load a new data set, we'll look for which ones are inactive, kick one out, or as many as we need out, uh, and then load that new data set so you can go ahead and start querying. So you get more efficient use of your memory that way. But it may mean that your memory stays high. And that's generally a good thing in this case. Because right, we, we want to use the resources of the capacity. You own them? You should use right. them. Yeah. Yes, you're paying for them. So. And even if stuff's inactive, we won't necessarily kick it out right away. We will leave it there in case um, someone comes back to use it again. And um, you know, until we get some memory pressure, we'll leave it there. I've read that we get 100 terabytes of storage for a premium capacity node. And so that means I can load 100 terabytes worth of data sets, right? That means you can have 100 terabytes of data sets, but you can't use them all at the same time. Depending on what your SKU is, how much memory you have, that's what's going to cap how many things you can have concurrently. Got it. Got so it. So if you have, let's say, 700 users using one model, 
that may work great. If you have 700 users using 700 different models, that may not work out so well. Got it. All right. All yeah. Be loaded. Because everything wants every everything wants to compete for that memory space. Yep. So how do I tell if something got bumped out of memory, Josh? So on the data sets tab here, um, this will actually show you by hour how many data sets were evicted from memory. Okay. So evicted is the official term. My term of bumped is not bumped evicted. Bumped evicted. It's we tend to use evicted. Unloaded yeah. from memory. It's not trademarked. Uh, we will take it out of memory, bring something else in. Also referred to as paging. For all you Windows people yeah. out there. You'll see everything uh, being evicted here by hour. But again, this is normal behavior of Power BI. This does not mean you, you have a problem. So, so if I see a lot of evictions, that's bad? No, not okay. necessarily. All right. Really, it's, you worry about what are the consequences of not having enough capacity. How are my queries doing? How are my refreshes doing? And we consider queries as, and refreshes as two different types of operations. One's interactive. That's queries. You're sitting here, you're clicking on the report, you're expecting to have results right away, versus interactive, I'm sorry, versus background, which is a refresh, scheduled refresh. You're scheduled processing. Night, and, processing, yeah. yeah, you'll come back the next uh, day and you want to see the results. Um, so we will actually always prioritize queries above refresh. Okay. So if you click on the queries here, you'll actually see the queries per hour, per data set, and uh, you'll see the durations of those queries by average. And you also see which data sets those are and which workspaces they belong to. That's awesome. So if you see data sets that are actually um, hogging a lot of uh, time and a lot of memory, you can actually go ahead and uh, find the owners of those data sets and talk to them about making some optimizations there. Awesome. So we can fi basically figure out which data sets are the hot data sets that everyone's consuming and then make a business decision about how we want to handle that. Correct. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily mean, mean you need more capacity. It might need, uh, mean you need to make a little more efficient use of your, yeah. your data sets that are yeah, there. And so we could go in and look at maybe there's uh, data model optimization stuff. Yep. Maybe there's... Uh, yeah. Look at improving your DAX queries. Look at your RLS. Um, and sometimes you'll see a, a report will be running slow or queries will be running slow in a particular data set, but other data sets are unaffected. That may, that may mean, that's a, probably a good sign that your capacity is working well, but you have uh, particular issues with uh, just one data set. And if you see certain spikes, you can click on the different hour bars here and it will actually show you, it will filter everything down to show you what was running during that right, hour. Right, right. Okay, so we can zone in on the spikes. Yeah, there's another chart here I want to focus on. Um, and this one is the query wait times. We try to run a query you know, as soon as it possibly comes in. But um, sometimes you know, the, the data set may not be loaded in memory, so we have to evict something yep. and load it. It's usually a pretty quick operation, but it doesn't run instantly in that case. It runs close to instantly. And also, if your CPU is saturated. If, you, if, you're, if your vCores are, are highly saturated, uh, we will actually queue up queries and not run them okay. until the CPU starts to come back down. What what is that? How does that show up from an end user perspective? Like if I'm using the report, what would that look like? It would look like your, quer your queries are taking longer to run. Okay, so like a slow, sluggish report. Yep. Now you can see here, and the, the amount of time those queries are, are taking is, is uh, shown here on average. But you can see here, these are like five milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. They're very, in most cases, very short. Right. Um, so short wait times, no problem, no one's going to notice. Slightly longer, you know, still probably no problem. When they start getting longer, it means it most likely points to your CPU being being heavily saturated and looking at okay. maybe getting more cores or potentially moving some workspaces off there to a different capacity. Right. Okay. So another, we talked about queries now, which is our yeah. interactive. So so another thing with that also is that this could also we could look at optimization from the report perspective of maybe looking at how many visuals are on these reports that are hitting data sets, maybe scale yes. that down a little bit? So every visual on this report, or any report you create, is going to send at least one query to uh, your, your data sets. And every time you click on there, it's going to send at least, it's going to send a query for each visual that's on there again. So having 100 visuals on a report page is the way to go. Yeah, so a lot, okay. <laughs> No. <laughs> if you want to buy more capacity, yes. Right, yeah. um, so a lot of people ask me, like, how many, how many users can my capacity handle? Well, if you have, you have, 100 users with one visual on each page, um, probably a lot. Yeah. You know, are they all in the same data set? Are they all in different data sets? If they're using 30 visuals, it's a lot more load you're putting on there. Right, that makes sense. And you know, ideally, your queries are finishing sub-second. And you can get a lot of throughput because queries are finishing, they're not stacking up, and you're just, you're, they're all flying through. But if you have queries that are running slow, either, let's say it's not because of capacity, it's just because of the, um, it's because of the queries themselves or your, your, your measures, um, that can actually have a chain effect where it's using resources longer uh, than it should be, and that's blocking other things from running. Or, Got it. Or in most cases, it'll show slowing down other yeah. things. Yeah, so th 
So yeah, and we'll, and we'll get in. We'll talk to you in a little bit about just considerations for overall performance. So, so this is good stuff. This is good stuff. I right like now, it. This capacity looks pretty good. My query, um, my query times are pretty consistent. Um, I mentioned before that we also we have background jobs yes. as well. So refresh is what we consider to be a background job here. Now we'll always prioritize queries over refreshes. Oh, so we'll actually always prioritize interactive over background. In this case, queries over refreshes. So if we need, if there's refreshes running. Um, and queries try to come in and we need those resources, we'll actually stop the refreshes and we'll put them into a queue so that they'll get the run again later when the resources free up so that the queries can get the best experience and still run. Refreshes also depend on memory just like queries do. So they have to have enough memory for them to be fully loaded in there plus additional memory for, uh, for the processing. So right. we will actually, if you're doing a full refresh, we'll generally use at least double the memory. Um, and if you're doing, That's because we still want to maintain the interactive queries on right. that data set. We'll make it so it's live, you can keep querying it while it's being refreshed. Right, because what you don't want to have happen is to tell your CEO that, hey, can you hold off for Wait 45 minutes? minutes. Yeah. You know, I, I need to refresh the report. Right, full refresh will again use double, but if you start to look at uh, the new incremental refresh feature that we've added to Power BI, that will only load new data in. In that case, you're using a lot less memory. Right, because it's going to be like a subset of the data. We yep. don't need to do the full data. Only the changes, right. only the new stuff. Right. And not only is it using less memory, it's finishing faster. The more things that finish faster means the more things you can run. Yeah. Now, is there, so talk to me about, uh, for the different capacity nodes, are there limits to the number of concurrent refreshes I can do? Yeah, so refresh, just like queries, is limited by memory. There's not enough memory we will go ahead and queue them if we can't evict anything. We'll always, every time we'll always look to evict first. Um, if we can't evict anything, the refreshes will go into the queue. Now, memory is not the only thing um, that refreshes depend on, not the only resource. Refreshes tend to be very CPU intensive, uh, more so than queries. And uh, because of that, there's actually limits on how many uh, refreshes you can run at, a single, at one time on a particular capacity a different SKU. Each SKU has a different, depending on how many cores you have, you have a different number. It's usually 1.5 times the number of cores. That's how many refreshes you can run. Like a times the end. number of back-end cores. Back-end cores, thanks for pointing that out. And then, but when you don't have enough cores, or you have too many running at once, they, will, they won't fail. They'll go into that queue that I talked about. And, and so this would look like, for, for like an admin or a user going in, be like, hey, my, my refresh, it's stuck. Yep. It would look like your, your refreshes are taking longer. Yeah. Um, you'd come in the next morning and you see, ooh, this just took a lot longer than it did yesterday. Yeah. And you can actually see that on the admin report here by looking at the refresh wait time. So, in general, my refresh wait times are around a minute, a couple minutes. Something happened this day where it really spiked a bit higher and it took a little longer. Um, you know, I might want to dig in and investigate that a little more. But in general, my refreshes are definitely getting prioritized behind something. And there's too many going at one time, but they are still finishing within a minute or a few or a couple minutes around uh, where they were supposed to finish. Nice. Yeah, so do you need more capacity? Queries at this point are probably running fine. Um, if you need your refreshes to finish exactly when they were scheduled, then you can consider moving things off this capacity or getting more cores uh, or more memory, depending on which one's uh, blocking you. Um, but in a lot of cases, you know, you're okay if these things wait a little bit longer. They're background anyway. Um, so no one's sitting by waiting for them to complete. Just other things uh, to note on here, you can still see the refresh durations. You click on any of the bars in the bar chart, uh, it'll filter down the other charts to show what was running during that hour, uh, which is very helpful if you had a lot of refreshes at one time. Uh, maybe you have one problematic refresh. Uh, you may want to ask them to maybe schedule a different time of day so you can get some of the other ones done at that point. Yeah, another thing I'd add too is a way to supplement the data in here would be to also use something like the REST APIs or the PowerShell command list for Power BI, because we can go in and then tie, look at, based on the data set, see what those data sources are, and then we can track all this back to, yep. like, what, what, was, what was the SQL server that was getting hit? Yeah, and uh, good thing to point out here again, just like with queries, we map this back to the data set, to the workspace, right. and you can always find the workspace owners and reach out right. to them. Yep. Workspace owners um, are also been the data set owners. All right, Josh, so we looked at the new reports. These are awesome. These really provide some better insights than what we've had before. So in general, you know, I get a lot of questions on my team about, okay, well, I'm just starting out with premium. What, which one do I need for my business? Or I've got one, but do I need to upgrade to a larger one? What are, what are the considerations we need to take into account? Not all workloads are created equal. So 
people do different things on, um, on different reports, on different capacities, uh, and different companies. So it's really, you have to look at your company, what is your average workload like? What is your average report like? Does it have one visual on it, or does it have 100 on it? Do you have one really large model, or do you have 1,000, uh, you know, 30, 40, 100 megabyte models? Um, the size of the data sets is very important, again, because that's going to be what consumes memory. The amount of the data sets is important um, because, again, that's going to consume memory, but also it's going to need to be refreshed, and there's more refreshes going on, and uh, yeah, longer queues. As, as an example of that, I worked with a customer where they had well over a thousand data sets in their model, and I remember when you yeah. looked at it, you were like, it it's <laughs> look, working all right. Yeah. And so our initial assumption was there are probably a lot of small models and reports and not like these huge, massive things. Yeah, and in their case, they were basically seeing refreshes taking longer. Queries were fine, um, but refreshes were taking longer, yeah. and, but they were still finishing. So they had to make a decision, do, are we okay with how long the refreshes are taking, or do we want to have more capacity on here? Uh, or, or even scale out to get different capacities yeah. to spread it out across. Yeah, it's, it's, if you can scale out, that's great. Yeah, a second capacity, put some of the workspaces on there. Yep. Uh, I've also seen a lot of customers, what they do is they have two capacities. One is more where they'll put the lots of small models on there, and one is where they'll put kind of centralized models, and they'll have, um, they'll restrict who can put models on that one, and they'll have the other one yeah, be a little bit more that's open. more uh, business critical, Yeah. so we don't want to impact that. Yeah, and they, basically they can then guarantee how much uh, resources they're giving to those critical reports um, versus having it all in one capacity where um, it might get used by any report. Um, that's something you can do and maybe instead of getting, uh, going from a P2 to a P3, you, add, uh, you split that P2 into two P1s. All right, good stuff, what else? What other considerations do we have? The characteristics of the data are very important. Um, do you have a lot of high cardinality columns? Do you have a lot of unique strings? Yeah. Those tend to use a lot more memory. So we're talking about the data model itself, like how yeah. is this built out? In this case, the data in the data model itself. Right, yeah. well, yeah, the data, well, so the data model structure is important too. Data model structure is also important. And then the types of data and items that we have inside of it, and then DAX measures as well, like what are we doing in DAX? Yes, that maybe... and your measures, measures are very important for query perf and how much memory they're going to use uh, during those uh, queries. Uh, if, you have a lot, if you have calc tables, you have calc columns, they don't impact you during querying, other than they'll take up whatever space they take in memory when they're loaded. Yeah. Um, but they will, they, they can cause your refreshes to run longer if they take a long time to calculate. Yeah, and as an example, I had a customer where they had a, it was like a one gig PBIX on disk, mm -hmm. and my, my laptop is a pretty beefy, beefy laptop, 64 gigs of RAM, and when we loaded that, playing it up, it plateaued out at 48 gigs of memory. Yeah, if, if you see like a spike in a refresh, uh, and it's, sorry, a spike in memory usage during a refresh, there's a good chance it's due to either a high cardinality column in there or some calculation that's running, yeah, so taking a lot of Some calculated memory. column that just went wild. Cal column, some, some long, large column with a lot of unique values, um, or a calc table run amok. All right, Josh, so what, what can someone do to prepare for premium? Like, uh, are, there, are there any testing considerations that we need to do? Yeah, I, what I like to do is, and once I kind of understand what the average workload is, you're never going to find what everybody's doing. But find something that you think is pretty representative, somewhere in the middle, not the most crazy, not the, not, and also not the simplest. Um, and start working in a controlled environment. Get a capacity where you, you're the only one on there. Just test it out as a single user. Run your reports, run your queries, look at how much that uses. And then you can start to think about, okay, as you get more and more users on there, start doing the math of um, you know, what, what that will start to consume as more and more people get on there. Uh, the tests you run should be repeatable. So you should get pretty much the same results every time you run it because you're in a controlled environment, you're doing the same things over and over again. Now one, once you get a good idea of what your typical or what your average workload is going to consume, you can do the math, figure out what you're going to need, and start with that. Start doing more and more advanced testing if you need to, um, or start rolling out to, to customer or to your users. All right, guys, my question to you is, have you looked at this report? If you're a premium admin or if you're you know, using premium in your environment, have these reports been looked at? Have they been helpful to you? And or is there maybe something that wasn't there that you need? We'd love the feedback. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let us know. Or ideas.powerbi.com. Or ideas.powerbi.com. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.